Now let's take a look at linting. Linting is supported by the linter community package. So let's take a look and see how we use this. As you can see here, I've got a sample index.js file, and I see a number of errors and warnings in the left-hand pane. So these indicate linting errors in my code. So you'll see that if I navigate through the code, it will highlight in the left-hand pane a red for an error or an orange for a warning. And navigating to these various different rows will highlight the specific error in question. You can also see the summation of all these errors at the bottom of the screen, as well as how many linting errors are in this particular file and the project as a whole. So in this case, I've got a number of issues here. It looks like one of the biggest issues is that I'm missing the use strict statement. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add that to the overall document and save. So you'll notice that as I save and type, this will automatically apply the linting logic again and update the UI. So in this case, I've cut down the number of errors from 25 to 12. So looking through here, it looks like I'm missing a few semicolons. Missing a semicolon here and on the close of the function statement. It also looks like I'm missing the directive for uh, defining this variable. This is part of the use strict catch. So in this case, it's saying that I'm using a variable name before it was defined. So in this case, I need to add a var to the front of this. There's also a couple other helpful tips. So in this case, it's saying that I've defined say hello three, but I've never used it. It's likely a mistake. So if I navigate down here at the bottom, I'll see that I actually meant to call say hello three, but I just never executed it. In this case, I'm missing a few more semicolons and I'll go ahead and add those here. So now you can see that this particular file has cleared all of its JS hint warning errors. Now there is still another one in the project. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And it looks like that there is a missing title tag in the index HTML file. I can click this directly and it will take me directly to that particular error. So in this case, the title tag cannot be empty. So I'll add this, hello world. So now if you look at the bottom, you'll see that there are no lint issues across this file or the entire project. This is a good practice to get into to, to eliminate all the lint issues across the project. Let's take a look at how this works. In this case, there's a base package that provides all of the core linting capability to Atom. Then you can simply find and install the unique linters for each language. In this case, we've pre-installed linting for CSS, HTML, Java, JavaScript, JSON, and PHP. Some of these files require additional configuration either via a doc file or via the language itself. So in this case, PHP requires a little bit additional configuration, where JS requires the addition of a dot file in a dot JS hint RC file. You can find more about this by looking into each package to determine what its unique requirements are. Now let's take a look at how we can customize some of these linting rules to eliminate some of the more obscure errors. So in this case, let's take a look at the JS hint RC file. The JS hint RC file allows us to fine tune the linting requirements for JavaScript. In this case, I can enforce a number of different options from the indentation size to a variety of rules that will ensure that formatting is consistent across all developers. In this case, I'm using the sample JS hint RC file that comes from the JS hint project. You can find this by going to the JS hint slash JS hint examples and find this directly within the project. It's recommended that you always include this for your web development project to ensure all your JavaScript code is consistent across your various different team members. This can be further extended for other languages using other dot files.